Gmail is one of the main ways you will communicate with your teachers and classmates. Keeping your Gmail organized will help you to not feel overwhelmed with digital communication. In this video, you will learn how to organize your Gmail, how to write emails to send to your teachers and classmates, and how to avoid phishing and scams. You can access Gmail by opening up your Google web browser and typing mail.google.com in the address bar. Sign in with your school Gmail account, your username at rcs-k12.us. Read your unread messages. If you come across messages you no longer need, then delete them. To delete, click on the box to select the email, then click on the trash button. You can also open the message and then select the trash button as well. Unsubscribe from unwanted emails. You may have used your school Gmail to sign up for a tech tool you use in school. Now you're receiving updates. You can unsubscribe from email lists by opening the email and clicking unsubscribe option at the top. Sometimes this is located at the bottom of the email as well. Update your email signature. To update your email signature, go to the settings gear, select see all settings, then scroll all the way down to where it says signature. Click the create new button, then type out what you would like your signature to say. Don't forget to go all the way down to the bottom of the page and click save changes. This signature will now show up on every email you send. Be sure to check your email regularly. It is good practice to check your email in the morning and then again at the end of the school day. Read through your recent messages and reply to any that you need to by clicking on the message and hitting reply. Then delete any messages you no longer need. When replying to emails, it is best to reply within 24 to 48 hours. Let's talk about how to properly write an email message. Take a look at this letter Harry Potter received, letting him know he was accepted to Hogwarts. The letter begins with a greeting. A greeting is also known as the salutation. Another important thing to note is the letter focuses on one topic. It does not jump from one request to another. It includes proper grammar and punctuation. And it ends with a final greeting and signature. Email is just a digital format of a letter and should be treated in the same way. Much like a formal letter, email follows a distinct structure, which is why many of the same rules for letter writing apply when composing and sending emails. By following the five basic features of email etiquette, you will be able to avoid miscommunication and be a better digital citizen. Let's take a closer look at these important email features. First feature is salutation. Your email should start by addressing the person you are talking to. This greeting should include the title and the name of the person to whom you are writing. Be sure to spell their name correctly and capitalize all proper nouns. No one likes to open a letter and the first thing they see is their name misspelled. Use your schedule or look the teacher's name up on your school website if you're not sure how to spell their last name correctly. The second feature is the topic slash subject. All messages have a subject line that describes the topic of the email. The purpose of the subject line is to alert the reader of the content of the email. When emailing a teacher, be sure to include your hour and class in the subject line. Let's look at an example. Based on this subject line, the recipient knows the email will contain information about the fifth hour language arts argumentative essay assignment. The body of your email should be written in clear, short paragraphs. It is hard for people to keep track of different requests and conversations if the topics are jumbled up. If you need to, use bullet points to help you stay organized. The third aspect is to focus on grammar. It is important to use correct grammar and spelling when sending emails. Use spell check, but also remember to proofread your message before sending it, as spell check won't catch everything. The quality of your writing makes a big impression on the person reading your message. Avoid writing and abbreviations associated with texting. Not everyone understands texting lingo. Plus, it's important to remember email is a formal letter and should reflect the proper use of grammar and spelling. Stay away from using emojis such as smileys as well as decorative fonts. Fancy and unprofessional fonts make the message difficult to read. See what a difference font choice can make in the readability of an email? The tone of your email is very important. If you write your message in all caps, it feels as if you are shouting. This can be annoying and difficult to read. Only use capitalization when needed. 
like when capitalizing proper nouns. Be sure to use proper punctuations. Sentences should end in their appropriate punctuation, such as a period, exclamation point, or question mark. The final feature is your sign-off. Close off your message with a closing greeting and signature. By applying these five features of email etiquette, you'll be able to compose a message to your teacher in a professional and appropriate manner. Let's talk about how to avoid scams and phishing. What is phishing? These are phony emails, messages, texts, or links to fake websites that scam artists use to trick or hook people into giving out personal and financial information. The best way to avoid a phishing scam is to be skeptical about any online requests for personal information. It is also good to be skeptical of online messages or posts from friends that seemed out of place for them, which is a warning sign their account has been hacked. There are clues that can help you spot phishing scams. Let's check out this phony email message to learn the clues to help us spot a phishing scam. Generic greeting. Spelling errors. Too good to be true. A sense of urgency. And then links or attachments in the email. You might be thinking, yay, free money, I'm going to be rich. But the moment you click on the phony link in the email, you open the door for the scammer to take your valuable information and run away with it. If you encounter something online that you think might be a phishing scam, you should follow these rules to protect yourself. Avoid opening the message in the first place. Don't click on any links or download any attachments. They may contain viruses or spyware. Don't reply. Mark as junk mail or spam in your email so the message gets directed into your junk folder. Or just delete it. Following these important guidelines will help protect your identity and keep scammers from getting the keys to your private information.